So today I'm gonna to share my current top 10, 11 favorite picture books. Hey, hey, welcome back to my channel. One thing to note before I jump in is that, of course, this is from the viewpoint of someone who studies picture book illustration and someone who is incredibly interested in illustration. My selection might be a little different than what you would expect if you have children. So if you do have kids, and that's why you're here, you're not an illustrator, but you wanna find books for your children, that's awesome. And in that case, I would just recommend, hey, check them out at your local library first if anyone from my list appeal to you have your kids look at them, take them to the local bookshop and see if it really is something that they love as well. Before I show it to you, I will tell you one more thing about all of these books. You see it over here and that is that I've put a little post-it in one of my favorite or most representative illustration spreads, double page spreads in each of the books. Now the books are copyrighted so that's all I'm going to show you. I'm not going to read you any of the text inside. I'm not going to leaf through it and show you a ton of the pictures because I think in a picture book that is truly the experience that you are purchasing or getting from the library and showing it here just is not right. So with that being said, you've waited long enough and I hope the anticipation is building. Let's get into my very first recommendation. Let's go. First book. What is it? So well, that is missing somewhere else now. Anyway, the very first book that I can recommend is this book that I have been passing for a year and finally purchased. And it is called Die Honigbiene. It's written by Kristen Hall and illustrated by Isabelle Arsenault. She builds in so much emotion and playfulness and movement and sort of little wit or quirk in, you know, just this tiny little smile, for example. I think it is very powerful and it looks so easily done, which to me means there is years or decades of practice behind making it look this effortless. So you have this gorgeous book and then you have this really vibrant pop of yellow, almost orange, that carries you throughout the book. And it is actually an educational book, so it's written in rhyme, which is really fun, but it's also very educational and I think we all, adults and children alike, need to learn about the honeybee and what they do for the environment, how they can be protected. And it's done in a very interesting way that keeps you engaged and yet you learn so much in such a few pages. All right, so let me jump in and show you one spread of this amazing book. It is a very colorful book. It's not only black, white, and yellow. But I just really love these kind of heartfelt interactions between the characters. And so I wanted to show you this, but it is truly a beautiful, beautiful book. And I really encourage you to check this one out. So on to the book that is missing. It's Mark. All right, On a Magical Do-Nothing Day by Beatrice Alemagne, who definitely check her out for her other work, does beautiful work. So, in one sentence, what I love about this book is that it fulfills the promise of magic. It takes you to a wonderful, wonderful place, reminds you how beautiful it is to just be creative and explore and be in the moment, even if it is a really rainy, gray kind of day. All right, then there's Julian is a Mermaid by Jessica Love. I just have to read you this little blurb, celebratory and groundbreaking by the Sunday Times. I agree. This is a book in the LGBTQ space, and I think it is a wonderful book for every single child. It is a message of endless and unconditional acceptance for who you are and being loved that way in your family and being able to thrive in that space. And it's beautiful. So one example of an illustration, which also is, um, which I also love because many children grow up in cities, for example, this is a gorgeous illustration in the tube in 
in public transit, which is something that many kids use daily. So I think we need more picture books like this. I absolutely love it. I can't quite pick a favorite from my top 10 or top 11, but if I had to, this might be it. All right. I want my hat back by John Classen in one sentence why I love this. The deadpan humor and the highly skilled way that this book is made really funny, so funny it's for adults, is second to none. I love this. I make all sorts of people that visit my home actually read this because I think it is a gift. It is a gift to laugh. It is a gift how well this is done. I'm going to show you one of the spreads that is not one of the highlight spreads. So this is not one of the moments where something happens in the story, where it turns, where real humor makes you laugh. But I don't want to give that away. So check this out. To me, it's an absolute classic by John Classen. It just doesn't get better than this. All right. So then we got The Truth About Old People by Lena Ellis. Just looking at this cover, you can tell, sorry, it's a little reflected here. There we go. <laughs> you can tell the gorgeous movement of these figures. You can tell how lightly it is sketched and how the color extends through it, giving it more vibrancy, more life. I absolutely love it. It is also very funny. You have a lot of juxtaposition between the text and the images that are shown. And it is a love story for grandparents, for the elderly in our society, which I have so much respect for and think that relationship between grandchildren and grandparents is absolutely beautiful. And so then you have amazing spreads like this. I mean, just look at this. Does this not make you laugh? Does this not make you feel the joy that they are feeling? For me, it does. It is such a beautiful book with a wonderful, powerful message because I think that's one of those universal truths that even though our bodies might start feeling older, you know, in the end, this is all of us. This is, this never goes away. And I really enjoy that lightness of being, that beautiful joy seeing that in a picture book format. So yes. All right. Then we got Joy. And look at these beautiful colors. So this book is by Corinne Averis and Isabel Follett, or Isabel Fula, not quite sure. But I love it because look at this joy and isn't it just transported? Doesn't it translate so well? The color, the movement, the curve of the eyes and the eyebrows and the mouth. To me, this picture is joy and so is this book, even though it is deeper than that. So it doesn't only go through the happy emotions. It also tells a story about a relationship with a grandmother and some of the sadder emotions that a human might feel. So I think it's really beautiful. Have a look, for example, the movement, the vibrancy, and also something that I truly appreciate is more representation in picture books. So it's not only white families in every picture book. And that is something that the industry really is working to improve on. So that is a beautiful, beautiful thing for children to recognize themselves in picture books. And here is one option. I am a worry wart and I'm sure many children out there are too. So I picked up this wonderful book called, sorry, reflection again, The Worry Saurus. It's by Rachel Bright and Chris Chatterton. And so often, I do feel like this. And it's a very common emotion, I think, and something that can really hold you back from truly living in the moment, enjoying the good things, rather than worrying about all the possible things that could always go wrong. So after I read this book, I felt like this. Isn't this the cutest little end page? I absolutely love it, and I always want to feel like this. So I think if you read this book, and you buy this for your child or your classroom or wherever, this might really help those that go through similar emotions. All right, then we have a book that was released in 2019, The Someone New by Jill Twist, and I'm not sure if it's E.G. or Egg Keller, but they are a New York Times bestselling author and illustrator team. 
And so this book, what I love is it's 2019, but it's timeless. Look at this beautiful, beautiful style. It reminds me of a new and improved version of picture books of my childhood. And the theme, being a little fearful of something new is also such a universal experience. So I love this and I have to say, it actually brought tears to my eyes the first time I read it. It is really heartwarming, a touching story and a story of welcoming, a story of being a little bit braver. And I have to show you, this is the kind of illustration, whoops, this is the kind of illustration that awaits you. And you have so many cute little details that will keep not only children entertained and keep their attention, but also the adults. It is a multi-layered kind of book where you can always find little funny um, tidbits like here in the to-do list, for example. It's super cute. I love this one. To me, it's an instant classic. This book is super, super cool. Um, it is a book for young and old, so I definitely recommend you check it out, especially if you're also interested in design because it has a very, very interesting look, a very interesting use of white space. I love the use of white space and flat color such as in this. All right, second to last one. So this is a book that I stumbled across while I was at my local bookshop leafing through what beautiful picture books might be available. And to me, the illustration at the front, it just immediately got me. So this is De Höchste Bücher Berg der Welt by Rocio Bonilla. And I love it because it is a book for book lovers. So it is a story about books, about getting lost in books. And I think it's very, very precious. What is also amazing about this book is the characterization. I mean, it is funny. Just look, look at these facial expressions. They just get me. They are funny. And I really love that. And I also just love how this is done in what appears to be at least watercolor. It's a very light kind of classic look brought into modern times. All right. Last one. So this is my bonus tip. This is number 11. And the reason why is that I don't know what this story says. I have a general gist of what it's about, but I bought it while I was traveling in Italy, maybe a year or two ago, and it's in French. And I don't know what it says, but I tried to find it in English and it is with a different illustrator, which is also a very cute style, but I specifically bought this for the illustrations. This is really either a book if your children speak French or if you're an illustrator and you really just appreciate that kind of art style. So the reason that I purchased this is that to me, it is so unusual. It has an almost street art, graffiti style, very contemporary, very adult style. And what I love is that I just showed you some more classic looking picture books that are maybe timeless and so forth. But I also love that you can push the boundaries of what children can understand. They can appreciate art in many, many different forms. It doesn't have to be only the classic cute style. And so this to me pushes the envelope in an amazing way. I'm going to show you one of the illustrations that is still a little more in the picture book style. And I won't give away the rest, but it is truly from a color perspective, from a style perspective and so forth. It is to me quite groundbreaking really. And so this is another book for those design lovers. All right. So I hope that was interesting to you. I hope you found a few that you might check out at your local library or leaf through at a bookstore. Maybe you're going to take the risk and buy it online. That is up to you. If you do end up buying or borrowing one of these picture books, let me know what you think. And let me know if you have some favorite picture books that you want me to check out because I always love hearing about some new tips. And I'm sure so does everyone who's watching this channel.